2011 second semester ACP review objectives 2 and 3 solve systems of equations and inequalities. On the first week of June, my Algebra 2 students will be tested in part on their ability to solve systems of linear equations and linear inequalities. Because the two types of systems are so closely related, I thought I would tie them into one large lesson that goes over the concepts and also works out problems of the scope and difficulty I would expect to see on that test. When it comes to systems of equations, there are many ways to solve them. There are solving by graphing and solving with more purely algebraic methods such as elimination and substitution. Then there is solving using matrices, solving using tables, and finally by plugging in given numerical answer choices to check the solutions. And when it comes to solving systems of inequalities, we are necessarily more limited in the methods we can use since there will be infinite numbers of solutions instead of just one point on a coordinate plane. The main methods of solving systems of inequalities are graphing and checking answers from multiple choice options. While we, we will be spending a little time in this lesson looking at a solution using tables, we will spend most of our time in the methods uh, uh, that solutions of equations and inequalities have in common, and that would be by graphing and by checking the multiple choice answers. Here's the first problem in this lesson. Find the solution to the following system of equations. We have y equals 2x plus 4 and y equals negative 1 half x minus 6. We're going to solve this system of equations by graphing. We start at 4 on the y-axis, since it's the y-intercept of the first equation. Next, with a slope of 2, we change it to the fraction 2 over 1. We just draw a division bar under the 2 and place a 1 there underneath in the denominator. Since the numerator of the slope is 2, we have a rise of 2. And since the denominator is 1, we go to the right 1 for a run of 1. We mark a point at the end of the rise in the run. Then we draw our line that goes through the two points. Next, we graph our second line, starting with the y-intercept of negative 6. Then we draw our rise of negative 1 from the y-intercept, so that's down 1, negative 1. And then we draw in our run of 2 by going 2 to the right. We draw in another point at the end of the run. Now we draw our line through the points. This point where the lines cross is the intersection between the two lines or the solution to the system of equations. And the coordinates of this point appear to be negative 4 comma negative 4. It's important when possible to check the solution by plugging the answer back into the equations. For the first equation, we have negative 4 equals 2 times negative 2 plus 4 equals negative 4. For the second equation, we have negative 4 equals negative 1 half times negative 4 minus 6 equals negative 4. Check. So we graphed the system and found our solution at negative 4 comma negative 4 and checked our solution. So we circle our correct answer, A. Now we're going to go to our next problem. Which point is the solution to the following system of inequalities? We have the inequality y is less than 2x plus 4 and also y is less than negative 1 half x minus 6. Perhaps you noticed similarities to the last problem. The numbers and the letters are the same in the inequalities but they are inequalities and not equations. For inequalities we don't use lines to see where they intersect but use lines as uh, boundary lines or borders. The two lines will cross on the coordinate plane, maybe something like this. A dashed line indicates a greater than or a less than inequality, whereas a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to inequality uses a solid line. And then the solutions will be found in one of the four sections of the graph created by the crossing of the two boundary lines. We bring out the coordinate plane to graph just as we did in the earlier problem. The first inequality we graph just as we did before using a rise of 2 and a run of 1. But in this one, because of the less than symbol, we have a dashed boundary line. And this less than sign means that the solutions are found below this boundary line, which we mark by shading in below the dashed line. And for the second inequality, we also use rise over run, a rise of negative 1 and a run of 2, then draw the boundary line, dashed again, because the inequality symbol is less than. And for this inequality, it's a less than inequality, so we shade again below the dashed line. So it's this section below both boundary lines that contains the solution set. Not a single solution 
as in the system of equations, but an infinite number of points within the shaded area. That, of course, extends infinitely downward and also some to the left and to the right. So we can plot all four points from our answer choices. It looks like it's here at 0, comma, negative 8. To check our answer, we plug our solution back into our first inequality so we get negative 8 is less than 0. That's true. Negative 8 is less than 0. Check. Next, we try the second inequality, and that is negative 8 is less than negative 6. Is that true? Yes, it is. Check. And since 0, comma, negative 8 is the point inside the doubly shaded area, it's our correct answer, so we circle our answer D. Next problem, the system of equations problem. Find the solution to the system of equations shown below. And then the equations shown are 3x plus 6y equals 6 and 2x minus 3y equals 4. We're going to solve this system by graphing as well. We could solve for y, so we could graph as we did in the first problem, but instead we'll use what we call the intercept-intercept method of graphing. We find the x-intercept for the first equation by covering the y term, and the image of a thumb is placed over the 6y. So our equation to find the x-intercept is 3x equals 6. So the x-intercept is 6 divided by 3, or x equals 2. So we mark a point at our x-intercept of 2. We find the y-intercept by covering the x term with our thumb. That leaves us with 6y equals 6. We solve for y by dividing by 6, so our y-intercept is 1. And we mark our graph at y equals 1. We draw our line through the two points. Next, we repeat the process for the second equation. We cover up the y term. We have 2x equals 4, and solving for x, we have x equals 2. We mark our x-intercept at x equals 2. Next, we solve for the y-intercept by covering up the x term. We're left with negative 3y equals 4. So that gives us y equals negative 4 over 3, or negative 4 thirds. So we mark our y-intercept at negative 4 thirds on the y-axis, a little less than negative 1 we draw our line through the points. We see the intersection of the two lines at the coordinate pair 2 comma 0. And we see the solution in answer B, so we circle B, the right answer. Next problem. Which point is part of the solution to the following system of inequalities? We have 3x plus 6y is greater than 6, and 2x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 4. For this problem, it's a lot like the last one, except that we're establishing boundary lines and not lines of equations. For the first inequality, using the intercept-intercept method, we have a dashed line because it's greater than, and of course, being greater than, it's shaded above the boundary line. And looking at this one boundary line alone, we can see that answer A, negative 1, comma 1, is not inside the shaded area and is therefore not a solution and can be crossed off. And likewise this point 2 comma 0 which is the solution of the two equations found earlier is not a solution here because we need the solution to be above this boundary line since it's greater than so we cross it off. For the second inequality we have x is equal to 2 for the boundary point and for the y-intercept, we have negative 3y is greater than or equal to 4. Dividing both sides by negative 3, we have y is greater than or equal to negative 4 over 3, except that since we divide by a negative number, we get y is less than or equal to negative 4 thirds, so we draw in our second point for the boundary line, and we draw that boundary line for the inequality. And since it's less than, we shade below the line. And here are the two remaining points plotted at 0, 2 and at 4, 1. 0, 2 is only within one inequality, so we cross it off. But 4, 1 is in the area shaded by both inequalities at the right. So it's our correct answer, so we circle it. Here's another type of problem, one using tables. The two following tables represent 
data from linear functions. Which is the solution to the system of equations represented by the two functions? There are different ways of doing this problem. We could find the slope and use the point-slope formula to find the functions. And that form or formula is y minus y sub 1 equals m times quantity x minus x sub 1. If we find the slope of each line, we can use a single point from the table to find a line. We'll look at the first table. On the left side we have 6 minus 2, which is 4, and on the right side we have 9 minus 1, or 8. So the slope or rate of change between two points is 8 over 4, which equals 2. So in the point-slope form, we'll put in 2 for m, 2 from this point for x sub 1, and 1 for y sub 1. So our, our function becomes y minus 1 equals 2 times quantity x minus 2. That simplifies to y minus 1 equals 2x minus 4. We add 1 to both sides of the equation, and we get y equals 2x minus 3, which we use to label the top of the first table. And for the second equation, we do the same thing. On the left side, we have um, 12 minus 5 equals 7, and on the right side, 21 minus 7 equals 14. Our rise over run is 14 over 7, which also equals 2. And since the slope is 2, the same as with the first equation, we know that answers A and B are not possible, so we can cross them off. From here, we'll use 2 for m, 5 for x sub 1, and 7 for x sub 1. And so that becomes y minus 7 equals 2 times quantity x minus 5. We use the distributive property on the right side, and it becomes y minus 7 equals 2x minus 10. And adding 7 to both sides of the equation, we have y equals 2x minus 3, which we also use to label on the top of the second table. And since both tables have data from the same linear function, we know that there are an infinite number of solutions so we circle our correct answer C. This problem could also be done very easily using the linear regression feature in the graphing calculator. Here's our next problem. Find the solution to the following system of equations. We have y equals negative 7 minus 4x and 8x minus 9y equals 19. With this problem, we have one equation, y equals negative 7 minus 4x in slope-intercept form, and the other equation 8x minus 9y equals 19 in standard form. According to the methods we've used in this lesson so far, we could convert them so they are both in slope-intercept form and graph them, or we convert them both to standard form and use the intercept-intercept method to graph and solve. For this one, we're going to demonstrate something a little different. We're going to substitute our answers and see which of the answers a through D satisfies the equations. We'll first try answer A by substituting negative 3 for X and negative 1 for Y. Our first equation becomes negative 1 equals negative 7 minus 4 times negative 3. That simplifies to negative 1 equals negative 7 plus 12, which reduces to negative 1 equals 5. And since negative 1 does not equal 5, we cross off answer A. Next, we try answer B, 1 comma 3, to see if it works. This becomes 1 equals negative 7 minus 4 times 3. And this simplifies to 1 equals negative 7 minus 12. And this simplifies to 1 equals negative 19. And since 1 does not equal negative 19, we cross off answer B. Next, we'll try answer C, negative 1 comma negative 3. That becomes negative 3 equals negative 7 minus 4 times negative 1. And that simplifies to negative 3 equals negative 7 plus 4. And that simplifies to negative 3 equals negative 3. That looks great so far. Now we need to try out the second equation. The second equation becomes 8 times negative 1 minus 9 times negative 3 equals 19. That simplifies to negative 8 plus 27 equals 19. And that simplifies to 19 equals 19. And since we, we've we now tested answer C in both equations, we can choose as our answer C, which we circle as correct. We've gone over six problems on this lesson without touching the graphing calculator. This has been 
Algebra 2, 2011 Second Semester ACP Review, Objectives 2 and 3, Solve Systems of Equations and Inequalities. Thanks for viewing.